Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to take up a numerical on time division multiplexing and pulse amplitude modulation. Let me read out the question first. A signal M1 of T is band limited to 3.6 kilohertz and three other signals M2 of T, M3 of T and M4 of T are band limited to 1.2 kilohertz each. The signals are to be transmitted by means of time division multiplexing. Part A of the question is, set up a scheme for realizing this multiplexing requirement with each signal sampled at its Nyquist rate. Part B says, what must be the speed of the commutator in samples per second? Lastly, part C of the question is, determine the minimum bandwidth of the channel. Right, let me start with the solution part here. Here, we are given four signals, M1 of T, M2 of T, M3 of T and M4 of T with certain band limitation as shown in the numerical here. Let us start with the part A of the numerical first. Part A of the numerical says, to set up a scheme for realizing this multiplexing requirement with each signal sampled at its Nyquist rate. So, let us first find the Nyquist rate for each of these signals. For that, I will create a small table. Let the first column be the signal itself. Second column is the bandwidth. And lastly, the third column be the Nyquist rate. I will write the four signals here. The bandwidth of M1 of T is 3.6 kilohertz. I will just write it as 3.6 because the column represents bandwidth in kilohertz. The same is applicable to Nyquist rate. So, M1 of T has a bandwidth of 3.6 kilohertz and the rest of the three signals have a bandwidth of 1.2 kilohertz each. Please remember when I say bandwidth, it is actually the highest frequency component of the corresponding signal which is W. Therefore, as per the ideal sampling theorem, Nyquist rate is equal to 2 times the highest frequency component of the signal. So, in the Nyquist rate column, I will write the values by multiplying the bandwidth by 2. So, this would be 7.2, this is 2.4 and 2.4 for the rest of the signals as well. Right. So, with that, let us now start by setting up the scheme. To set up the TDM scheme, what is most important is the commutator design. So, we are now supposed to identify what is the number of poles in the commutator and what must be the speed of the commutator in revolutions per second. Now, if you look at the four signals as shown in the table here, you will note that M1 of T has the highest Nyquist rate. If I try to sample all of these signals that is M1 of T through M4 of T, then the overall bandwidth requirement of the TDM system would be considerably large. Why? Because the M2 of T, M3 of T and M4 of T have a lower Nyquist rate. With such a commutator design, we are going to use a large bandwidth which will be considerably higher than what is necessary. So, when you are asked to design the TDM system, the commutator should be chosen to have a rotation speed equal to the lowest value of the Nyquist rate of all the signals available. Therefore, we can now say if the commutator is rotated at the speed of 2400 rotations per second, then in one revolution, we will have one sample each from M2 of T, M3 of T and M4 of T and three samples from M1 of T. Let me write that part here. Right. So, we can now conclude that the commutator will have a rotation speed of 2400 rotations per second and in each rotation it will have one sample each of M2 of T, M3 of T and M4 of T and three samples of M1 of T. 
Thus, we can now say the commutator will have six poles. Now, I will show the design for the commutator itself. Let me draw the commutator diagram here. Right. So, this is the design of the commutator as well as the TDM system itself. Please note the commutator is shown with six poles. We start from this one, pole 1 and if you look at it very carefully, there are three samples of M1 of T, one here, another one here and last one is shown here. And we have one sample each of M2 of T, M3 of T and M4 of T. Right. So, that would be the design of the TDM system. Let us now move on to the part B of the question. Part B of the question says, what must be the speed of the commutator in samples per second? Now, we have now identified what must be the number of samples per one rotation. So, how many rotations per second and what will be the total number of samples per second can be directly computed here. Please remember, M1 of T has 7200 samples in one second. M2 of T, M3 of T and M4 of T have 2400 samples in one second. Therefore, the total number of samples per second would be the sum of each of these samples, which I will write here. Therefore, the total number of samples per second is Seven thousand two hundred plus three multiplied by two thousand four hundred, which is equal to fourteen thousand four hundred samples per second. Right. So that is about part B of the question. Let us now finally move on to part C, which is to determine the minimum bandwidth of the channel itself. Now, to find the minimum bandwidth of the channel, the formula is quite easy. The minimum channel bandwidth is simply the sum of all the Nyquist traits divided by 2, which I will write it here. I said it is 1 by 2 multiplied by sum of all the Nyquist traits. So, it is 7200 plus 3 multiplied by 2400, which is equal to 7200 hertz. This is the answer for part C of the question. With that, we have now designed a simple scheme for the TDM for the given four signals. We have identified what is the total number of samples per second, what is the rotation speed of the commutator and what must be the minimum channel bandwidth. Well, that is about this numerical. If you like this video, Kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.